Okay, so we're going to take what we did last time. So last in the video, like the kind of beginning video here, we were talking about like access of variables and how like variables are only kind of defined uh, within, you know, if they're in the global, they're available everywhere. If they're within a function, then anywhere in the function, but not outside that function, all that stuff, right, we talked about. Uh, so let's talk a little bit more about, there's actually one other layer of complexity here. And it's all about primitive variables versus reference variables. So primitive variables are... Those any of those like really basic ones. So it's like an int, um, like a double, like a boolean, any of those very simple data types. So those get stored in, in memory a little bit differently than other types of variables. Like all the other variables, um, like I think, I mean, strings are a little bit of a weird case here. We could test out some strings here. Um, but anything else like an array list, those are all objects. And those are, they deal with, they just get, they get accessed slightly differently. So let me focus a little bit on primitives first, and you can find this. I'm going to include this repl link in the, in the Google Docs. So if we start here, um, so we've defined a variable, and this is just actually an example straight from the doc. So int number one, so we're going to set a value equal to one. We're going to pass this. Like, I think in the, the first time we did this, we kind of deleted this, and we wanted to, we try to run this. And of course, oh, we don't want that, right? We tried to run something like this, and he said, okay, well, that's, that's obviously not going to work because, you know, can't find symbol. We can't find number three here uh, because we haven't, we haven't declared it within this different function. So we said, okay, well, next thing, well, that's fine. Well, all we have to do is we just have to pass that number in, number, pass that in here, and then number is equal to number plus three. This should be fine. So, like, the code will run. But we get an answer of one. We get the, the value of one, but, like, we did number is equal to number plus three. We have access to it, it didn't give us an error, but yet like the value didn't produce what we wanted. And that's because when we pass in, and this is gonna make, it's only really makes sense when we compare primitives versus reference variables. So let's look at primitives a little bit and then we'll see kind of how re reference variables, primitives work like the way we are maybe used to and reference variables work a little bit weirder. So the problem here is that um, if we wanna get technical, What's going to happen here is, like, primitives are very small. They don't take up a lot of memory, like one, two, three, four. Like, those are not very big. Objects might take up a lot more memory. You know, if you're storing all this information about a class or an object, functions, all this stuff, it's going to take up a lot in memory. So, uh, like, when we pass in a, a primitive variable here, like, so we're setting number and we're passing number into this uh, function, we are going to pass in a copy. We're not going to pass in the actual variable number, we're just going to pass in a copy. So we're just going to pass in the number one. Um, the, this method, this function, can't adjust the variable. Like, the variable doesn't, even though we have access to it, uh, we haven't, we can't directly, like, we've gotten access to a copy of it. We haven't gotten access to the actual variable itself, which seems like, okay, what, what's the point there? Um, but all that really means is that we just need to, like, return... So that's why we can't do this as a void. We need to return a number. And then we could do this. We could like update the value of number. Number is equal to add three. So now we are we are updating the value of number within this part. That's fine because number is defined within here. Um, we can't do it within here because we only got a copy of the value, not the actual thing itself. So when we run this, number is equal to four, right? Okay, one gets passed in here. Um, the one gets passed in here, we return one plus three. Okay, and we set that equal to number, number's four, and we print that out. Uh, if we just go back in time just a little bit, this doesn't work, right? Because we don't have, we can't change, even though we did get receive a copy of number, we didn't actually receive the, mm, like, basically the address where the information is saved. We just received a copy of it. Okay, so let's compare that to this. Um, so now we're looking at more of like a reference type. So any of those kind of objects are reference types. And like, so an array list is a much more complex set of data than a, like a primitive, like a, an integer is very simple. Uh, an array list is gonna contain a lot of information, a lot of kind of functions. So when we pass in, so okay, so let me just go through this one where we are defining like an array list of integers, blah, blah, blah. We're gonna add numbers to it, great. When we print it, uh, we should get, well, let's just run it. Oh, yeah, we already run it, ran it, right? So we should get 4373. Three. Okay, that's fine. We're going to remove first. Okay, that goes down to this method. Um, and then we're going to get this. So let's look at, like, what's a little bit weird here. What's not weird is that we did pass in the, um, we did pass in the array list, right? So we did pass in numbers. We did remove first, and we sent in this array list called numbers. 
So that's the same as primitives, right? We don't have access. We wouldn't have access to numbers otherwise because numbers is only defined within this main function. It's not defined within the remove first function. But the weird part is here, there's no return. Like we didn't return the list, right? When we did numbers, we had to return this in order for it to work. Then we had to like adjust, we had to return it. And then we had to like update the value of number to be equal to our, um, to our add three, uh, to, to be equal to like the output of this. And now I write this, so this one worked. Um, that's kind of not the point there. Here though, you'll notice like, well, it's still working. We removed first, we passed in the numbers array list, and then we printed out numbers array list, and it's 373. We did remove the first one, but there's no return here. We didn't have to return it. We didn't have to uh, change the, we didn't have to like redefine numbers up here. Um, it worked within here. And the reason for that is that this method, remove first, since it's taking in an object, it's going to get a link to the actual object. It's going to say, uh, so like what happens on a computing level, like on a compiling level is like the code is saying, oh, for this object, it's stored here in the memory. Like look at the hard drive or look at the RAM and find it right here. And you can like access it directly. When we do that in a primitive, we don't access the actual like where the, where the information is stored. We only access, we only get a copy of the number. So if we passed in one, we'll get the number one. We won't get access to the variable. So it's kind of like a weird distinction there, but it's really important because you'll, otherwise you might see some weird stuff in this and like it might not make sense. Um, so variables, primitives are handled very different from reference variables.